you are watching Redicon. Okay, one more case. You can see sagittal and axial images of a patient. There is straightening of the lumbar lordosis, so back muscle spasm is present. Body heights are maintained, slightly heterogeneous marrow signal, however still within normal limits. You can see there is multi-level disc dehydration. You do not see you uh, do not see the nucleus pulposus very well because of the desiccation. If you pay close attention, then you can see there is relative narrowing of the thecal sac or central canal and the posterior epidural fat appears very prominent. It is almost compressing the thecal sac anteriorly as seen on the sagittal image that the triangular posterior epidural fat pad in the axial slices is very prominent and it is overflowing from the points of attachment as well. So this is a case of posterior or epidural lipomatosis and it can have varying degrees. Increased amount of fat in the posterior epidural space has been known to cause spinal stenosis or narrowing of the thecal sac which can be symptomatic. Okay, that's our last case which shows a coned or focused view of the thecal sac demonstrating marked enhancement along the meningeal layers and shows drop mats in a patient with known malignancy. That's our complete checklist based on A, B, C, D, E. So alignment includes spasm, scoliosis, kyphosis, anterolisthesis and retolisthesis. The body of the vertebrae or bone marrow issues include LSTV or lumbosacral transitional vertebra, fractures, mass ligands such as hemangiomas or metastasis, osteophytes, anthesophytes, romanus ligands and ankylosing spondylitis. C or conus, we looked at masses, teething, myelomalacia, myelopathy and syrinx will be shown in the case examples. Then finally D for discs, we have herniation, centrally, laterally or far laterally, facet joint osteoarthritis, ligamentum flavum thickening resulting on impingement on the central canal or narrowing of lateral recess or exit foramina and facet joint effusions. E is for epidural fat or extras, arachnidoitis, synovial cysts, previous surgeries, sacral toroidal of cyst, presacral space issues, neurofibromas and not to forget your review areas in which you can see triple A or abdominal aortic aneurysm in the retroperitoneum, lymphadenopathy, renal masses, pelvic masses, free fluid, psoas abscesses or paraspinal muscle issues including abscess or collections. Once you have reviewed your checklist then we must think what to put in the report. I guess the main purpose of radiology report is to know have we answered the clinical question? Am I looking at a cause of back pain or radiculopathy? And if there are relevant finding presents, am I helping my clinical colleague in answering the question they may have? Based on the appearances or based on the findings, does this patient need surgery or not? Mostly it will be decided by the spinal surgeon. However, we can have a fair educated guess whether particular pathology or finding will need surgery or not. Many times patient after the MRI will be asking you the same question as well. Okay, now is the time for the real thing. Now you will be looking at the cases making your own assessments, making your own interpretation based on the findings and then preparing your own notes. For that, you will be given a separate link into our case archive in which you will be able to see all the DICOM unpacks enabled cases. You can look at the case, make your own judgment, find your interpretation and cross check against the standard reports and checklist. Please visit www.redicon.org and once you are into the course, you will be able to get a further link for the case archive. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell for new courses. For more modules and radiology CMAs, please visit www.radicon.org.